A viewer to this channel recently asked me to provide my thoughts on the doomsday argument in philosophy, and if I thought there was any truth to it. The doomsday argument is an increasingly popular probabilistic argument that indicates the human race is close to extinction. So first I'll attempt to easily explain what the doomsday argument is and outline why I think it's flawed. Now, although I think it's wrong, there is something with the doomsday argument I think we should be wary of going forward, which I'll explain at the end of the video. The Doomsday Argument, or DA, was originally called the Carter Catastrophe and proposed by astrophysicist Brandon Carter in 1983. The argument caught the attention of philosopher John Leslie, who helped champion it. The modern form of the argument, which I'll go over, has been formulated by Nick Bostrom. DA is a probabilistic argument that claims to predict the number of future members of the human species given an estimate of the total number of humans born so far. It states all humans are born in random order, and chances are any one human is born roughly in the middle. Because you and I are most likely born in the middle of all humans to exist, there is a decent chance the human race will become extinct in the next few centuries. And how's that so? The argument goes roughly like this. Imagine I have two boxes. In box A are balls with numbers on them 1 through 10. In box B are balls numbering 1 to 100,000. Just imagine the boxes are roughly the same size for this thought experiment and that you can randomly pick any of the balls when you put your hand inside. Say I blindfold you and put one of the boxes in front of you and you draw a ball. If the ball has the number 5 on it, which box do you think it came from? Well, there's a 1 in 10 chance it came from box A and a 1 in 100,000 chance it came from box B, so most likely it came from box A, right? Now imagine two scenarios for humanity, doom early and doom late. In scenario doom early, the human race exists for another 100 billion people a few more centuries and then dies out. In doom late, the human race continues to grow and expand across galaxies with over 100 trillion humans being born thousands of years into the future. To date, about 100 billion humans have been born. So according to the doom early scenario, we exist somewhere in about the middle of the human race. In doom late, we'd be among the very first percentile of humans to ever exist, almost like drawing a number 5 ball out of 100,000 total balls. Because our birth rank is about 100 billion, that's about in the middle of the human race, and we're here contemplating the DA argument, so it's more likely that doom soon is true. There appears to be a 50% chance that the human race is going to end in the next few centuries, give or take, for population stability, and we're going to become extinct sooner rather than later. Now, some individuals challenge the specifics of the math and population in the argument, for example, factoring into decreases of birth rate, technology that could radically extend human lives, and more that could affect the specific date of doomsday. But the general idea of the DA isn't to give a specific date of doom, it's just that the human future is not so long and populous as we all like to think it will be, and that statistically we're more likely to go extinct than to leave Earth and colonize the galaxy for thousands of years to come. So is the DA right, and whether through wars, climate, or the singularity, or something else, the human race is set for extinction soon? Well, I could be wrong, but I think the argument is flawed, and the issue has to do with faulty anthropic reasoning and the fact that we are not typical observers. Now, the anthropic principle states that we necessarily observe from an environment in a universe capable of producing observers. The anthropic principle has been used to help explain why this universe has the age and the fundamental physical constants necessarily to accommodate conscious life, since if either had been different, we would not be around to make the observations. But instead of talking about environments, we're talking about observers here. Nick Bostrom calls this the self-sampling assumption. An observer should reason as if they are randomly selected from the set of all existing observers in the reference class, past, present, and future. There's this idea that we could have been any of the humans in existence, but we happen to be randomly selected to this particular point in time in history, which should then theoretically give us clues about the future of the human race. We need to assume that we're typical observers for the DA argument to work. But it's one thing for a human to pluck balls out of a box with a fixed certain number of balls and make calculations, and another for a conscious entity to be plucked from non-existence into a particular point in a reference class with an unknown total number of humans that will exist. The problem is we don't appear to be randomly selected in a way that gives past, present, and future humans all an equal chance. Therefore, we aren't typical observers rendering the argument fallacious. For instance, it appears our existence isn't randomly selected, but instead selected by the year of our birth. We are necessarily alive at the time we consider our position in human history, so everyone who is not alive now is excluded from the selection pool. 
A person, if truly randomly selected, would be likely to live later than right now if doom delay is true, meaning that we can't assume we are randomly selected. Plus, even if we could be legitimately treated as a random selection with respect to birth rank, our position would always be relative to the doom soon and doom delayed scenarios and the argument would still fail. Most scenarios take the current time as the starting point for formulating the probabilities with no possibility of the species becoming extinct before. Think of it this way. Imagine our birth rank was 10,000 instead of around 100 billion, and we understood the doom argument at that time. Using the data provided at the time in history, it would be about around a 50% chance the human race would die out around the 20,000th birth mark, and that it would be almost impossible for the human race to reach our actual birth rank in the billions, which is what we are. Wherever we happen to be alive, the argument would be the same, meaning our being alive now can affect the probabilities of doom soon or doom delayed being true. The doomsday argument is most likely incorrect due to the incorrect assumption that you are a random sample from the set of all humans to have ever existed. It turns out we are not typical observers, which is required for the argument to work. Now, you probably had an intuition that the argument was wrong from the start, and the important thing here isn't disproving that humanity may be going extinct soon. The more important thing is properly understanding and using the anthropic principle. The anthropic principle is a relatively new concept in philosophy and is being utilized more and more. It's helped win Nobel Prizes, in fact. Although it can greatly help us, the anthropic principle, when used incorrectly, can lead to shocking, seemingly correct conclusions that are really incorrect. The popular simulation theory is another one of these arguments that utilizes the anthropic principle incorrectly, I think, but many people seem to think it's right. We should be careful of the tendency to assume that we, or our environment, or observations are truly typical and representative. So hopefully this video clarified what the doomsday argument is, uh, why it's probably incorrect, and uh, hopefully it was interesting to you. So if you liked it, please make sure to subscribe for more videos. Uh, that are similar using the link in the description and turn on the notification bell to receive updates when new videos are out. And let me know any other questions you have. Uh, I will post uh, my thoughts about them and answers. So thanks for watching and I'll see you again.